Welcome to Sideline to Baseline with your host, MB and K. Lou. Hey, Lou. What's good, y'all? Ballers out there, we appreciate y'all stopping through, checking in, pulling up. We got a special guest tonight. So you know we only do these sit-down shows when we got somebody special. And y'all already see the face. Y'all know it. Uh, Mr. Jamal Weeks. Listen, this guy here baseball player major league baseball player played for the oakland a's baltimore orioles boston red sox san diego padres he ranged from altamont and, and it lets you you know from the orlando area y'all know what that is so he go by the old town man he we gonna go ahead and let him join us tonight all state player late bradley then uh, sadly, you know what MB got in the background, man. The he new, chose baby. that school. Don't, he chose you, that's it. That's it. Hey, he that's don't really it. like it. That's why he ain't got it in his background. He went to the <laughs> new <laughs> Never that. I got a four. I got, got it coming down for us, baby. Yes, sir. See, they I won't eat. Saw his. I saw exactly. his on the last it's all good. Hey, we hey. can share it all the time, baby. No, hey, hey, look. They know what hey, time look. it is. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> a freshman Louisville slugger All-American in the builder, man. Yes, That's sir. what he was. But before he even got out, got out of high school, they tried to pull him in. The Milwaukee Brewers say, look, Blair, we got a little something, something for you. <laughs> and they drafted yeah. him in the eighth round. And uh, but but Jamai had other plans, man. He wanted to go to the U. That's Don't right. try to get him a chill, a natty. And, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. But, and, and right after that, man, he did the right thing because uh, he was a first rounder with the Oakland A's. So, uh, mm -hmm. listen, man, the best thing comes to those who wait. So he sat down somewhere and got his, his mind right. You know, uh, I remember Tupac said, uh, get your weight up with your hate and fail back with your bill. So he got a there little bit. There you go. There you go. That's the energy right there. <laughs> so well, welcome, uh, ballers, Mr. Jamal Weeks. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. Appreciate both of y'all having me on today. Nice introduction right there, K. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. MB, baby. you know, to you all day, baby. Ain't no doubt, baby. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. No doubt, man. All no day. doubt. And hey, you're right. And now, uh, hey, yeah, when I was coaching out there, man, I saw you out there playing. We was at the U at the same time, and I yeah. saw you holding it down, man. I was able to uh, come see a uh, couple of games. One of my linebackers, man, I, I call him my Pop Warner linebackers, uh, Tom Boo Fentress. Uh, he okay. was out there trying, he walked on for a minute, man. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, man. yeah, 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 it was oh, good to definitely. see you out there, man. Huh? Appreciate it. Appreciate it, yeah. man. Yeah. I definitely well, remember Jemai, you too out there. Jamal, we're gonna kick off, man, and 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 uh talk, you know, about this huge elephant in the room. Baseball hasn't, you know, traditionally been a sport that a lot of black kids have migrated to. How how was it, you know, being a minority and how did you, you know, get get involved with baseball? Um, well that that's facts because uh the, the league now is maybe four to eight percent black um across the whole league right now. So uh the, the numbers have continuously diminished um at the major league level and we know that the that the uh, participation and the uh, the anticipation of the league needs to kind of rise and allow those athletes that can play the game at that level um kind of a gateway to get into the game. But how we got in, man, my, my grandfather he played on a number of uh, trial teams and made a couple teams in the Negro Leagues. Um, mm -hmm. This is in the 19, I want to say the 1930s, 40s um, is when he was doing that. So he was able to be with the Roy Campanellas. He's seen the satchel pages um, all the way, all the way down through the line. Um, then my father came through. He was an all-state baseball player. He played football, soccer, and basketball in high school. But he was an all-state baseball player, um, ended up going to Stetson university um didn't get as much playing time there for various reasons during those times and ended up getting his graduates uh his graduating from ucf um, with a biochem major and uh my brother began his baseball life so to speak uh out the womb um so ever since then my dad was pump pumping baseball into the bloodline um it's been a family sport the family loved it um like i said we have that negro league touch to our family 
So right. uh, it kind of been a bloodline thing for us. And I followed suit. You know, I played football, basketball coming up all the way through high school and baseball. And baseball was uh, our cream um, that we were able to run with. Now, and now I know you uh, you mentioned about all the other sports and stuff you played in. I read somewhere that your mom and your sister ran track as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sister was yeah. Hall of Ooh. Famer. All right, hey, who 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 used to win from the light pole to the light pole, baby? Who would line up? Who used to win back in the day? Hey, hey you know how last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They say the uh what the last become the first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My sister, man, she was uh she was a beast, bro. Like not even not even no joke. She was a beast. She's a Hall of Famer at Southern University right, right now uh for track. So uh, we had that in the family, but I tell you what, age matters, bro. Age and maturity matters. <laughs> I was the youngest. I was the youngest of three. I had so many excuses, know. Jamal. Man, look, she used to whoop me in fights and all, boy. I was like, I gotta get my weight up. I had to get my weight up. Bro. <laughs> No MB, doubt, and she looks the part too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, she looks the part. Yeah, bro. At that age, them, them sister three, four years older than you, they they, they be tearing you up in that house, boy. People hey, no doubt. Out, hey, hey, I, hey, Jamal, I was the same way. My sister used to go fight for me, man. I'll go get, man, somebody mess with me. I'm going to get my sister and my brother. So I'm the same way, you know? I got, I got a few stories. But yeah, yeah no doubt, happened. man. Well, hey, let me ask you this question. I know you mentioned about your 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 dad with your brother, right? And from the womb. When when did you fall in love with baseball, man? Because I know you play multiple sports as well. When did you first say, man, you know what, baseball is my sport? You know what? I probably didn't really get into um solely thinking about baseball and actually wanting to go do it on my own. So I was about maybe eleven or twelve, to be honest. Um, I had been playing since I was about three or four. Um, and it was kind of a uh, my brother going to the field. I got to go to the field, too. But I loved playing basketball and football. And, um, <laughs> man, it just got to the point to where we went to the field so much. And I started learning how fun the game was and how much mental uh, cerebral activity was involved with the game of baseball. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed that whole strategic factor to the game as well as the competition. Um, and um, yeah, about 11 or 12 years old, man, it really opened opened up my mind to what baseball could be to me. And I started taking that that extra step to go want to do that work on my own at that point. MB, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, I was muting my son. He's trying to he's trying to do like, hey, man, I need this phone. <laughs> I need this. Extra Come, phone. On Come on in. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, no I doubt. No phone. doubt, man. No, but it well said. So now and then now tell me as far as football, what, what position did you play, man? I was a cornerback. I was a second string uh quarterback because we ran the option. Um anybody who knows Lake Brantley knows they've been running yep. the same plays for the last 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, a pop could be waiting on the option on the outside. <laughs> hey, what but, hey, well, you know, Jamal, they running it too. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's the thing. Y'all running it, we running it. Whoever yeah. runs the option the best out here in this area, bro, that's going that's who's gonna win the game and play against one of these Miami teams in the championship nine times. Oh, yeah. Don't hey, hey, yeah. That's amazing, B. But one thing Jamal always had at late Bradley is the old line, but buddy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh what? They had, they <laughs> he had, had them big boys. Right. They had them big boys. They had them big boys on the line. I think when we were there, we had a center that was um, Jordan Nipsey who went to the NFL. He was yeah. all American at center. Wow. Um, I didn't know you could be all American at center. So I was like, man, what was he doing? <laughs> so I started watching. Every time he hit somebody, they fell over. So I said, I get it, man. I get it. But yeah, I stayed on the corner, man. I was in the skill position, you know. No doubt, man. Yeah. Nah. Go ahead, so, Caleb. So again, talk about, you know, uh, obviously you play other sports. But um, and it's a lot of kids like you that are really pretty much undersized. OK. Yeah, right, right. And and, you know, so basketball, they fighting the uphill battle, football, another uphill battle, because MB ain't even looking at you unless you're six foot at <laughs> the back position. But you can ball out of this world. But it's like it's ceilings, man. You got to be doing cartwheels, then getting the pick to be five, nine, five, eight. And, and go D1 at corner or safety yeah. is, is what it yeah. is. You now, better be walking on water. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So I see this a whole lot. You know, obviously, both of us see it a whole lot, obviously, living right here in Florida. And you see all those skill sets that could easily be transferable or translatable to the baseball diamond. Why can't we get these kids to buy in? <laughs> Man, uh, I'll tell you like this, bro. It's been this it's kind of been like this over like the last 10 to 15 years almost. Um, it's been on a decline. I would honestly say it's the representation. Uh -huh. um it's guys like myself like my brother uh mm -hmm. gordon in the city um a number of guys that are that are from the area that need to kind of put their best foot forward and the community needs to get behind guys like ourselves yep. to increase the awareness of baseball because baseball really has the best pension plan um of all these sports um they're they they have more maximized contracts over the over the yep. majority of the players out of all these sports and it's a lost art in our neighborhoods, but usually anything lost in our neighborhoods is nine times out of ten good for our neighborhood, it seems like. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, I, I really believe that the awareness factor needs to pick up. I also believe that um, the community needs to support those that are coming back um, to give back to the community yeah. in the form of baseball and softball. Um, they're opening up scholarships for minority girls all over the country. Um, but we got to be playing. And so that's where it comes from. Also, we, we all know the price of the sport is an issue. Uh, yeah. We know that yeah. it costs, you know, $100 for a great glove, $200 yeah. for a great bat. Um, you want to play in, a, in, a, in a, a series at perfect game. It might be $500 for the weekend or $2,000, right. depending on what series it is. Yep. Nobody has those kind of funds in our neighborhoods right. to be able hey, to use. Hey, hey, Asher, your career already over. J Jamal around here talking about two thousand dollars for a weekend. That's what we're talking about. I, I'm yelling at it right now. It's, it's, year, right? It's, it's over for you. Okay, we right. thought we were going that route. We out, Jamal. <laughs> I, feel yeah. you. I feel you, but I tell you this though, okay, Lou. Um, me and my brother been doing free camps in the city for the last nine years. Uh, right. We get 200 to 300 youth. Uh, we we try to bring as many underserved minority ball players to our camps right. as possible to get seen by AAU teams, perfect game, different coaches. And it is about awareness because although that is a block and a barrier for us, the financial side, um, we have been selfless in our giving. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't made one dollar off of right. our camps over the last nine years. And it's getting to the point where we might have to start making the dollar because if we're putting our best foot forward, we need us, the MVs, right. the K Lou's, those, right. the, 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 those that have names inside the city, the NFL players that I'm hearing every day, like, man, I should have played baseball. And my right. son need to play baseball. Right. I had kids. They, so everybody knows that they know that baseball is an avenue and a vehicle for us. Um, it's really about getting behind the real ones that's coming out here, putting the faculties together, trying to introduce it to our to our um to right. our kids and right. everybody supporting that that passion because basketball and football is overcrowding our space yes uh, yeah and yeah, there's no not doubt. enough room there's right not enough room so the vehicles have to open up we need more vehicles you right. know and um that's baseball why, is a hey, great vehicle that's why i'm gonna go ahead and put put it on layaway jamal you know you I put know. this layaway plan together you know now I that you done told me you gonna hit me in the head yeah you got me 20 <laughs> grand on the back end you hey let me let me use this cash out game and, and, and get you 20 on it and see what happens. <laughs> get you yeah, about 15, that gets you about 15 minutes or so you know hey, hey. i'm gonna take it hey, get jamal. You in the door. <laughs> Jamal, can you dig a little bit deeper in that? I know you and your brother started the Weeks Brother Foundation. Dig in a little a bit deeper about that. Tell the people who's watching how they can find out more about what you guys are doing so those kids in Orlando area, undeserved youth, uh, uh, can tap into that. Yeah, so uh, we have a website. It's www.theweeksbrothers.com. And the Weeks Brothers manage all faculty, sports, and education. Uh, what we've done is we've created a, a partnership with an entity that um, I help community initiatives through an entity called WeFam United. Um, and what we do is connect with WeFam United to add the educational pieces and the community pieces to the baseball piece. Um, and so you can catch that information at www.wefam.org. 
Um, and right there, Mike, uh, everything we do is to give back to these kids. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. You have at the Weeks Brothers on Instagram, and you have at WeFam underscore org on Instagram. So you can find us in both of those locations. We're continuously doing stuff in the community. Uh, we do a December camp every year, uh, totally free for the underserved community to go out there and actually get their feet wet um, and, and learn the game and enjoy the game. Then we were blessed by uh, the city of Altamont Springs, and we were able to get a number of kids last year into Little League um, for free. Uh, through the, wow. I think I believe it's the uh, Mr. Penrod's Foundation Fund. Um, Frank March helped us out with the ability to be able to um, fund some of our kids that came out of our program um, and allow them to get free play um, in Little League. Wow. That's awesome, yeah. man. And man, it's, man, great job, man. I just want to applaud you on that. And, and it seemed like you guys put a lot of work into that. Speaking of like, I know K. Lou was asking you this a little bit earlier. I want to dig back into that as well. Being a major league baseball player uh, or former major league baseball player, what's your thoughts? What could the MLB do to help improve the? Because you talked about how it's been the numbers been going south. How can they? What can they do to get the interest involved going north for uh, kids of color? You got to feed the grassroots organizations. You got to feed. You got to feed the organizations on the ground. We're on the ground. You know, we come from the, the you know the MLB experience, but we've brought everything back to the ground. And uh, we're here, you know, I'm in the middle of a neighborhood right now um, where, you know, it's an underserved minority community right now. And um, they got a baseball field right over here. We come out here, we we'll do small practices here and there. Um, and we just do whatever we can, you know, to kind of put programs and give kids active play. But where it really comes to for the MLB is actually finding ways to support organizations like ourselves. Uh, and adding funding and equipment behind it so that you can limit the cost. Right. So that now we can give the kids a fun experience at a low cost. Right. That's what they need to be able to have fair play, you know. And um, this has been the reason, this has been the thing for the last, I don't know how many years, because if you go to the Dominican Republic where my guys, my brothers are over there, um, they've set actual MLB training sites. Yeah. Where those kids are getting groomed almost from birth um, yep. into being brought into the states to get drafted and go to the major leagues or have their professional experience the same thing is in puerto rico and yeah. then they're trying to do the same things in cuba but our underserved neighborhoods in america don't seem to have the same access um, well, why, would, why isn't it in mlb's best interest to do that right at home though <laughs> like seems like it'll be cheaper and easier Seems because you've like got the systems crazy. already, and that's the college, you know what I mean? Getting them yeah. more experience and stuff. But it seems like they should do that, the same styles, adopt that early on, and then the kids go to college, and then you you got the cream of the crop. Right. But that's gotta be that's gotta be um that's gotta be your goal. Right. You right. know, to, to set that up, they set it up in those areas because their goal is to take Dominican kids. And exactly. give them opportunity inside the states, and go no to doubt. Japan and do the same thing, and Cuba no and Mexico, and do the same thing. Their right. goal has has not flourished in the states that way. So yes. if you want to be completely real and honest about it, um, they got to put a focus to it more. They yep. have the RBI program, um, but there's deeper measures that need to be taken. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Well, well said. Well said. Hey, hey, uh, Jamal, Jamal, talk about like the importance of faith in sports and uh, as growing up in the in the Weeks family. Talk talk about the importance of that and the value of that because it seemed like I mean, just hearing you talk right now, it, it, I mean, this thing is big bigger than you. It's in your DNA. Talk talk about the importance of that. Yeah, it's one hundred percent in my DNA and in my bloodline. I come from a lineage of pastors. Uh, my mom's an apostle right here on Forest City Road in Kennedy Boulevard. Um, I've been in the church my whole life. My, my uncle's a superintendent, my other uncle's a bishop. You can go down the line, right? And uh, my, grand, my great grandfather used to build churches right here in Winter Park, Orlando, Florida. Um, well known, Bishop Eddie Butt. Um, so you can go up and down the line. Faith, the faith component has been a part of our life from the beginning. Uh, we used to run a ministry off of Paramore in Washington um, from the time I was born till I was 12 years old, um, right across the street from the Callahan Center. And yeah. I was led by my father. Um, so we did that four or five days a week. Um, right. 
along with playing baseball, leaving the church on Sundays to go to our baseball games um, throughout Sunday and throughout the week. So we have never been able to separate um, our faith component and our sport component our whole lives. And I would be uh, pressed to actually say that that's how I got to the major leagues. Wow. I got yeah. to the major leagues because I never really focused on getting to the league. I'm not even going to give you the fluff story that everybody else gives, that this was a life, lifelong dream. Right. It, it wasn't my lifelong dream. Um, I can tell you that through faith and dedication, uh, I would practice to the glory of God. I was taught to do that and raised to do that. So when the coach told me to hit 10 line drives up the middle, I literally was trying to hit 10 to 20 line drives straight back up the middle when other guys would miss here and there and leave the cage. I wouldn't leave because I was taught to do it beyond what your coach right. is asking for. Yes. And that was always my, my mentality. And so somebody my size was able to maximize what I could do out there on any field. Right. Right. No doubt. No doubt, man. Awesome. Awesome. Now I know you're a bad boy with the, with the uh, baseball stick in your hand, but I also heard you're a bad boy with some drumsticks in your hand, man. Talk about oh, yeah. playing the drums, man. And when did you get started? And, did you used to play the drums in the church? Talk to me about it. Tell, tell me about the drumsticks, man. You know where it started, man. It all started in the church. Wow. It all started in the church, bro. It all started there. All of us wanted to be a drummer from the church, church drummer. All of us did. Yeah. Looking over there in the corner the whole time, seeing it rocking. Right in the rock. Right in there, get me. But that was my um, you know what, K. Lou and MB. Um, I still play the drum to this day at the church, bro. Um, <laughs> nice. Like it, it never left my bloodline. I started when I was like five years old, played behind my brother who played, and um, sure, it seemed like everybody who played the drums had something later in life always blew up and got better. So I was like, right. just fell in line. Yeah. And beat, <laughs> something gonna happen. <laughs> so that's how I started for me, man. I, I started playing at five and playing in the church and had my embarrassing moments, messing up songs and, and butchering <laughs> stuff. And yeah, but them, you know, them old folks in the church, boy, they they'll keep you up there, let you be embarrassed, but they're gonna keep you up there and encourage you to keep going. So that's what exactly. happened in, in my in my step with the drumsticks. Right, no lessons or anything like that, huh? You just called it, huh? <laughs> no, oh, you know what it is, it'll be, you know that fast. Want you to play real soft, you know yeah, why yeah. he bringing it down and, and smile over there playing hard. He like he he keep. Ain't even on. Me. Oh, did I lose? <laughs> yeah, he freezing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. We lost you. We lost you, Jamal. Jamal, can you hear uh -oh. me? Yeah, you we kind of froze. You got me. Back. Yeah. Okay, we had you. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm let's. Back in. let's can you, you... We got you. Let's move forward to your okay. college, man. You, we already know we done heard it. Rah rah, the you and all that. <laughs> well, so tell, tell us, uh, you know, um, obviously you had a brother and sister before you pick a HBCU the same, I, I might add, uh, Southern. But uh, yeah. what yeah. made you yeah. go a different direction and then go right into your career in, in Miami? You know, I, I saw my opportunity through the U, bro. I had always um, yeah, baby. looked at the U as a prestigious, prestigious university. Yeah, um, that's what it was. That's, history, true. that's what it is. <laughs> Hey, and <laughs> oh, oh, we lost. He outside though. Um, yeah. at the Jamal. At the fields. Yeah, he's yeah. at the fields. Yeah. I'm trying to block the calls from coming in. Oh, okay. Y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah we oh, hear you. We just don't see you anymore, but we hear you can continue. It'll come back on. It, it yeah. was really just the um phone call came in but uh oh, okay. yeah so yeah to get back to your question uh if you can re reiterate that question because i had to tell somebody to not call me right now <laughs> no okay no just just I, I was talking about wanted you to talk about you know your college choice and then you know your college experience uh you know as far as baseball goes gotcha. yeah uh so for me i know you said like my brother and my sister went to southern university hbcu um, mm -hmm. 
Oh, we lost them. Oh, we lost. He'll come back. Yeah. So, so MB. Uh, yeah. His his big bro with the uh southern. southern. And, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, did his thing, and then uh, uh his sister did too. Yeah, yeah big sister went down southern. there. And ba, 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 gave him more than he wanted. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Go ahead. My bad, fella. Yeah. yeah so no, to get back to. Yeah, I better keep talking before. Uh, some some other call come in, but um, what happened was, man, I, I I saw what was going on with my brother, and my sister, but the U was so prestigious because at that time, I think it was two thousand one MB or two thousand. Yep. Both teams won the national championship. Two thousand one and football. Yep, yep. Two thousand one. Yep. yep. You know, so at that point, I'm I'm stepping into high school already, K. Lou, um, uh-huh. and I'm seeing like all these guys, all the prestige. And whether you played on the baseball and football, it wasn't just baseball; it was football too. You hear me? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was the energy I had to play with, man. And so I saw all of that energy in the U. Um, and when I had the opportunity. That was the school I had always wanted to go to since my freshman year of high school. I had always wanted to go to the U. Wow. And so, yeah, Southern, they had me taken care of from the beginning. But I said, you know what? I got an opportunity of a lifetime right here. I'm taking this one. I'm gone. So yeah. talk about the baseball play while there and how you, your growth from high school to, you know, college and, and you know, coaching and, and all that stuff. Um, I, I came in. I was under uh, called three Jim Morris. Uh, the three baby, the legendary legend, yeah. Hall of Famer. Yep, three's out there now. Uh, teaching right now, MB. By the Isn't way, it? yeah, oh, man. Cool, man. Yeah, they got him out there being a professor. I said, I wonder what three out there. Wow, <laughs> he's so laid back, and cool. I like three, man. Three good he a people. Cool cat, man. Cool, cool cat. cat. At that point, Gino Damari was the assistant coach and recruiter. And uh, JT Artiago was the pitching coach. Um, yeah. But the difference, uh, K. Lou, from, from high school going to the U, man, was professionalism, bro. At the end of the day, uh, we had a pro style, pro level, professional training, um, professional workouts, the way that we went about our work on the field, the way that we trained. By the time I got to the minor leagues, mm-hmm. I, I didn't really have a learning curve. I'm being honest. I didn't really have a learning curve once I left the U. Everything that I learned at the U was what we were naturally doing in pro ball. Wow. Um, they fully prepared us to wow. be able to get into the systems of minor league baseball and actually have the best opportunity to excel to the big leagues. I can definitely say that. And you don't right. get that in high school a lot of time at all. And you mm-hmm. definitely don't get that at every college. Mm. Wow. 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 Yeah. So t- yeah. so obviously that transitions you right into the minor leagues. So talk to us about that cuz I mean, you know, a lot of us don't like myself don't understand even that process and then to know that you had to toil in it for a bit before you got your call up. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know it don't matter what round you go in, what you do in baseball, you're going to the minor leagues first. Right. Um there's a few anomalies if you're a pitcher that's throwing maybe 90 something to 100 something and you got location and you might have a fast track, but you're going to hit the minor leagues. Um, Mm -hmm. And then minor leagues is like the dauntlet. You know, people say, get it out the mud. Well, that's the mud. Um, (laughs) That's the mud, bro. Trust what I tell you. Um, Trust me when I tell you we've, I've done the 18 hour bus rides, 20 hour bus rides um, from South Texas to the middle of Arkansas um, and having to play the very next day early in the morning. Um, and wow. having a game, a three-game series, and then 18 hours back to Midland, Texas, from the middle of Arkansas, um, and then doing a, a, a morning game and doing the same thing with maybe one to two days off a month um, in the minor wow. leagues. So wow. it's no game. You might be getting paid, depending on the level that you're at. One level might be paying you 1600 The next level up might pay you 1800 At my time, the level before the big leagues was only paying you about 2100 a month max um, oh, wow. to be able to play. And you're talking strenuous schedules <laughs> and strenuous travel all six to seven months that you're out there um, during the season. So 
So do they the put you up and feed you? Yeah. They put you up. They give you some. They give you some uh, allowance money. But you're playing in cities like Bakersfield, California, right? Or Midland, Texas, which is like right. an oil field. So right. I don't know where you're trying to eat at, but. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ain't no Morton stay right. down the road or hey man. Ain't no, hey bro. Yeah, Lee. <laughs> Listen, you're getting it out the mud, bro. Trust me. Uh you, you got you're at McDonald's every now and then. You eat from the gas station every now and then. Wow. Um, yeah, so you gotta be strategic in how you move, man. Guys partner up, they they share funds with meals. Uh we share hotels and expenses. Um, somebody has a like car. Ben and Collins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not for, not for like, you. How much money you got on the piece, no, man? No, not for y'all. Oh, hey, shame yeah. the devil, MB. It ain't yeah. nothing like that at the U. Y'all take a kill. He ain't even doing that like more. Bro, he comes in a dormitory. He took a huge pay cut, is what he did. Around, say, man, yeah. who, who got some money on on pizza? Who ordered so Who got some money? We trying to scrap up some money. Ain't nobody I'm serious. Ain't nobody going five in. Everybody got to put in five. You had to do that once you went to the minors, but in college you were taking care of. No, <laughs> hey, this wasn't you. Me. Hey, y'all was taking care of that dude, but it was hey, like I'm, Miami, boy. I'm gonna talk about it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm telling the truth, <laughs> Miami, because I know you was telling me about that, K. Lou, how y'all used to eat so much. I was like, man. We used to have to put money together sometimes. Hey, look, man. You, growling, you had to put hey. some money together, man. Who got some money on some pizza? Domino's got a special. I know yeah, dude, man. y'all had food all the time. I wasn't like that at Miami, man. Yeah, man. We eat good, man. <laughs> <laughs> we had a five star restaurant on campus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, boy, man, I we weren't getting it out the mud. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why we played like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had that grinder at the U, man, because everybody couldn't afford that dining hall. That was the exactly. thing. Exactly. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't afford the dining hall. That's about an extra $500 a semester or something. Yeah. Man, look, my hey. parents, if it wasn't financial aid, we couldn't go. Come on now. <laughs> hey, talk, hey, hey, Jamal, talk about, man, this date right here I'm going to give you, man. June 7th. Right, 2011, man. Describe that day for you, Ooh, man. You already know. I didn't know you were gonna ask that, but that was uh, I was balling, bro. At that time, I'm not even gonna lie. I felt really good. I was killing in AAA Sacramento with the River Cats. All my teammates was kind of looking at me like, "Bro, you got four home runs already. With your little self, uh, you hitting 320 <laughs> something." You know, you still in bases. I think they about to call you pretty soon, bro. But I had yeah. Mark Ellis, who was like, he was known as the captain um, in Oakland at that time. So he had like a six-year tenure with them, one of the longest tenures with the Oakland A's. So it was kind of like, it's tough to see that still happen at that position because I was a second baseman and so was he. I was first rounder. But uh, right. that day, I was in the game. I was in the lineup, MB, K. Lou. I was in the lineup. I uh, played about two innings. And the manager called me up uh, out of the field, like in the middle of the second inning. Come on, you got to come out the game. And I had never experienced it. So I'm like, wait a minute, bro. What's going on? I feel good. I'm playing good. Come out like, the game. I know you're not trying to hold me back right now. You right. Know? right. Um, but I had teammates around me that had experience. And they were like, might be a call up. Bro. You don't know. It could be a call up. But you're definitely not taking you out the game. So I'm like, it's true. You think that's what it is? That would be nice if it is, though. Um, after the game, man, we uh, got into the clubhouse. He called me into the office, and he just, you know, tapped his pen. It was uh, 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 tapped his pen on the uh, on the desk, and he just said, you know how you're playing. They need you at the big league level, so I want to congratulate you. You're getting ready wow. to go to the big leagues with the Oakland A's. Wow. And, I, you know, I just, you just that's lose amazing. your, you know. You lose all your uh, extra stuff that you're feeling, man. You just kind of just let your body just relax and just be thankful, man. God really uh, paid off in the long run, man. Just just the whole struggle, the whole fight, the whole grind, um, all your life, you feel like it's about to pay off. And um, I was out of there the next morning, bro, early in the morning, headed to Baltimore for my debut. They had me in the lineup day one, bro. Wow. wow. No practice, no nothing. Just, hey, get out there. Let's First go. batter. Day one. Wow. 
June the 7th, I was the first batter. And I mean, I struck out on like four pitches. I ain't swinging the bat because I didn't see the ball. <laughs> I got up there and the ball was like, I didn't know that, you know, they had to rub it up a little bit because the ball has to have a certain type of um, grip. Uh-huh. And I'm like, bro, I can't. When I they struck me out, it was good pitching. I just was like, I'm finna swing. I'm about to swing, and I couldn't swing. I couldn't see the ball. <laughs> so the umpire was like, ah. And I was like, all right, you're doing the most, but let me walk back. And, out. <laughs> and they just well, looked at me like, get them on the next one, bro. You get them on the next. One. I was like, oh, hey, I don't see nothing, bro. I don't know how to get them. <laughs> Well, hey, well, eventually you end up getting them because you end up being what rookie of the month, man. Talk about right. that experience, yeah. man. Uh, you you in there your first month in the league, man. You rookie of the month, man. Talk about those things and how it all came together for you. Man, I um, honestly that first game I went zero for four, and uh, I know my light is getting a little dark here, but I went zero for four in my first game. Uh, uh, MB, and then after I had that 0 for 4, I looked up and I, and I saw my family out there, and I talked to some of my teammates that have had the experience of their first game. Coco Chris reached out to me, and uh, he said, "You know what? I went 0 for 4 my first game, but after that, I went 2 for 4, then I went 3 for 4, then I didn't. I think he became Rookie of the Month." And I said, "Okay." Wow. I said, uh, "You know, at the end of the day." You know, how we got there was through fighting and making sure we putting our best on the field. So when I left that yep. day, I say, I couldn't see that ball, but I'm I'm going to see it tomorrow. I'm going to find a way to see it. <laughs> I said, wherever them little rubbed up balls is, I'll bring them to the cage. I need to I need to hit those or whatever it is. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I went out there with full confidence. Um, I had a heavy um, pre-workout um, to the game. Because I wasn't finna go up there and lay down. I was finna go up yeah, there and, and y'all gonna have to see me and feel me up here. Right. Yeah. And that was my mentality. And that first game, I believe it was the first at bat, I hit a double um, to wow. the left field wall. Yep. And that wow. started me off right there. And I had a strategy. I went up there with a strategy. And my strategy, just through my experience of playing um, and watching my brother play as well, right. my strategy was, was spot on the whole season. Um, I ended up hitting three something that season because my strategy was spot on and uh, the league tried to adjust to me as I thought they would try to adjust to me. Um, so I knew my strengths and weaknesses and I played that that whole month and um, it played out for me. I ended up hitting three, whatever, 330 or whatever it was and being yeah. a rookie of the month. And that was a great accomplishment for me, man. Just to know that my major league career was starting off on a, on a good foot. Man, you you mentioned about your brother, man, and your fa- obviously your dad played as well, and your granddad. Man, how, how how talk about you guys' relationship, man, and how how you guys uh, y'all relationship closeness lean on on those guys doing tough times, especially with the stuff that you experienced, man. Talk talk about you guys' relationship as a family, and just close knit you guys are. Um, we all it was always communication involved. You know, we had a lot of communication involved in our relationship. My grandfather, um, he was blind as of about 1950s. Uh, he had a, a vein popped in his eye, so he he's never seen me um, at that point. Um, so, but he always, you know, he had the mouthpiece and he had memory. Um, and he would literally sit us down. He would call us, let us know what happened inside his Negro League stints and his opportunities to see certain guys play and what's important in the game and what you need to do in certain counts and how they did it. And then that led my dad to start talking who by trade, like I said, in my, my early years, he was a preacher so he could talk. Um, <laughs> so he was nonstop, loved the game of baseball to this day. Man, we couldn't get away from the game of baseball. So it was always communication. And then my brother and I just being kids, man, we played the video games, Sega, Nintendo at that time, right. all that stuff. Right. And, um, it, it was just a big family affair, that sport um, had a lot to do with the governance of the men in our family um, and that lineage. So the communication was always top notch and we always practiced together. We went to the field together. Um, if, if, if I had a practice, they would drop me off and go drop him off and then come back and pick me up. And we just kept the, the, everything tight knit and always communicated about what we were doing. And um, on the backside of that, what I commend my parents for 
is uh, the educational factor. The educational factor was always a part of what we had to do. If that homework wasn't done, you ain't going nowhere, you know? And we wanted to go. So when we came home, the first thing we did was our homework and we knocked it out so we could go outside or go to practice. Um, and that was a that was a rule in our home. And um, that was something that our parents really locked into us during that time. Man, wow. and, and, and MB, I can actually attest to what he's talking about. I had an uh, awesome experience of meeting his dad around 2011, 2012, right when he kind of started his journey. And that's all, you know, and me, meeting his grandfather because his dad would, you know, uh, would have his father with him hanging out as well. And, uh, you know, he couldn't stop talking about his two boys and his daughter, like all the time. Like he was talking about uh, uh, Jamal um, and what he was going through and talking about what he should have did last night. And you, mean, you know me, I'm clueless by baseball. Right. Right. Like, why is this guy talking to me? But he would not stop talking no to me about baseball. And then, you know what, really on this level, MB, with even his brother, his brother was going through a hitting slump at one time. And he was calling his dad to actually get pointers about the hitting slump, how to get out of it. So that was just amazing. So I can attest to, you know, the relationship. Oh, man. Oh, That's priceless, man. Tell me, uh, uh, Demile, like when you went through, start off, uh, had an outstanding rookie year, and then next year start like you know start going down a little bit, man. What 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 you what got you through the setbacks of major league, you know, with injuries and stuff like that, disappointment stuff like. Then you got traded, you know what I'm saying? Just all this stuff, man. What got you through all that roller coaster ride? Um, what got me through one is my faith. Um, yeah. With that type of sport, bro, you. In any sport at that level, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're done. You know, what I mean, if you right. have perseverance in you, you're done. You might yeah. well, you know, you need to go home and, and get reconditioned to what it takes to get here because it ain't gonna work. Um, you're gonna have injuries. You're gonna face issues and struggles throughout the uh, the, the elevation of your career. And um, I just really looked inside of me and knew um, the person I was and the ball player I was, MB. Um, I knew on the field I was one of the coldest ones on that field every time I touched yeah. the field. Wow. Um, yeah. And I knew that what happened to me in Oakland and, and the path that my career took, I knew there were deeper things behind that um, that I wasn't mm -hmm. able to control that impacted my career. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that, there was different things that happened because it's business. And right. you, become, you become a moving piece or a number. And at that point, um, they can kind of do what they want to do with you at that point. So. As I began to learn that, I realized that there was nothing I could do once they put a certain label or they put yeah. a certain tag to you, um, yeah. whether it be true or not true, um, it's going to follow you because the teams, it's like you being inside of college football. You, you know other college football coaches. You understand the temperature of everybody that's inside of your association. Yeah. Um, so once, once a team tabs you as something, then yeah. the rest of the league has to ask those same questions um, when you come to them. So yeah. um, to, to tell you about my career, because I'm no longer bitter, but I know that there were some inconsistencies um, with the stories that were um, hovering my career. Right. And, um, you know, I, I ended up leaving Oakland after seven teams tried to trade for me and they would not let me go. And um, they wow. didn't let me go because they said those teams did not offer enough for me, but they had me in AAA, not allowing me to come to the big leagues. Right. So therefore, I was trapped. And um, because they had control over my contract, I had to play the whole year in the minor leagues watching the lesser um, players um, go up um, over me after I was just on a, you know, Oakland's billboard. When you come into the city, I was the face of the city at that time right. in 2011, uh, yeah. 2012. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you don't usually see a fall like that in at, at any point after one season. Right. Exactly. Um, but that story would require a lot and it would require some book writing to really tell that whole story. Right. <laughs> um, but I can tell you that I ended up going to the Baltimore Orioles. I ended up um, having to get my dress cut off and I ended up getting cut from that team after I got traded for a guy that was worth 40 million, pretty much straight up. Um, so it was a really weird change of events that was going on during that time. And um, the reason why I resurfaced into the major leagues is strictly through perseverance, faith, and saying, right. I know the, the player that I am. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it to them regardless, wherever they got me at. 
And yeah. that's why I was able to keep surviving every year. Yeah, no doubt, man. It sounds like Joseph, man. You go from they threw you in the pit, go to Potiphar, throw you in the prison. Then, hey, the story's still been written, baby. You coming to the palace, man. You know? Most definitely. Most definitely. No doubt. Most no doubt. Most severe, man. I love your fight, man. I love your fight. I love Thank your fight. You. Now, tell tell for those who don't know, man, tell tell them what you got going on with now. What's your dream right now? What you got going on with what, 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 what's right now still in your, uh, uh, grabbing your attention, your passion right now as well? Um, right now, well, I did, uh, I ended up getting sick, man. I played in Mexico for a little bit, came back to the States. Um, and believe it or not, even though, you know, the age that I am, I ended up having a seizure when I came back. Um, wow. it, 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 that's what caused me to come off the field. I was coming back to the States to play. This is just two, three years ago. Um, okay. and, um, I yeah, that's what, 2018, back. right? I think. Yep. I was, yeah. yeah. 2018. And I just stopped. Playing. And uh, you see me right now because I just stopped and I never, never went back. Um, but I did get called by the Padres this year, um, early in the year. Then the pandemic hit. So I missed that tryout. Um, yeah. I ended up going back to school to finish my degree. Um, got a semester done. Um, didn't go back into the next semester because the Padres had called. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I lost that semester because I lost, you know, the opportunity at that point. Right. But what we're really doing right now, MB and K. Lou, is uh, the nonprofit world that I'm in. Um, I started a nonprofit called We Fam United, um, which is actually a, a, a partnership company, a sister company of the Weeks Brothers. And with that, we've been able to build out a very strong award-winning youth summer camp. And also, we've been able to build out a father's initiative where we remove barriers for fathers and encourage healthy relationships right. with their kids and families. Um, and then we yeah. lead the city toy giveaway where about 1,000 to 2,000 people come every winter and we give away about two to 3,000 toys to about 800 youth right here in the city that we're from. And um, that's been growing and gaining a lot of attention as of late. Uh, we just started a celebrity kickball game, which was last weekend on Saturday, uh, where we had Drew Good and D Gordon, my brother, we had a uh, 94.5 out there foot more from Channel 2 News. We had uh, Kyle Lewis, the rookie of the year this year with the Seattle Mariners out there. And I've really taken a liking to the event space that leads to funding things that impact the youth in our community. Right. Uh, and that's my biggest goal. Cause I've gotten some calls from Ghana and Africa to do things out there. Um, I've also gotten calls to do some things in the Dominican. So I'm um, just trying to see how much global and international movement that I want to do with this, but definitely changing the narrative of underserved youth and their families and communities is, is the main focus right now. Wow. And is there, is, is what's the why behind that? What, what makes you, what's your passion? What's your why? What, why is that so dear to your heart to go at the focus on the undeserved youth? Um, well, I ended up having um, two kids out of wedlock um, uh, 10 years ago um, in the same year two different mothers, right? And so I didn't know that I was having one at one time. And so when I found out it was a, it was a big hit to my life. Um, and this was before I even got to the league. So um, I had a very big wake up call. Obviously I had to go through a lot to even have the courage to speak on my situation. But um, at this point, um, the boldness is there and the confidence is there. And uh, the, the, the belief in, in my faith in Christ is, is definitely uh, taking away a lot of things that have caused me to be bold in this. So yes. um, I look at that and I understood that we had something special when we grew up as black kids playing in, in, a, in a sport that was predominantly white driven, being the one black kid or the two black kids on a, on a whole team your yeah. whole life. Um, you face things different than what the kids in football and basketball face. Yep. Yes. And so we, we were able to actually start our fight earlier um, and fighting through a system that doesn't seem like it involves you. Yeah. Um, yep. So we have kind of this, this firsthand experience that these kids will never get a lot of times because they, they don't get a chance to see what we saw because they're not usually inside the baseball ranks um, and having to fight that type of battle. Right. So it, it it wasn't robbery to me. I made my, you know, million and, and more going into the game. So it wasn't robbery for me to just come back and literally give back what these kids need because I didn't need the money, didn't need the fame, didn't need. I had all of that. And right. um, it was like, what are you going to do now? And I knew that space dealing with youth is almost like um, 
being a barber, like never going to not have kids on this earth. So it was a right. good business right. venture as well as a good heart venture to jump into the new space um, wow. to help these kids actually pipeline them to college because we have that experience. Well, that, well, man, Jamal, that's tremendous. Man, we really appreciate you because you fading into black. Hey, Look, <laughs> right uh, now, that background. I don't want to do too uh, much movement. Oh, no, no, no. You did right. You did right because uh, we just want to hear you. But we really appreciate you taking the time out to uh, come on sideline and baseline. Uh, man, this was an awesome story. We love to bring you yeah. back. Uh, which, hey, I should have reached out. He could have hollered at us about this baseball, about the Dodgers. Uh, but, but brother did yeah. throw a question yeah. uh, at you that I think is, is pretty cool and something you can expand or expound upon. And then we'll end. Let this be the last question. He said, uh, Jamal, would you describe your game as an analytic style or pure talent? He says that because he's fighting the fight of the uh, saying the the Tampa Bay Rays lost the World Series because they are analytic team versus uh, the Dodgers. (laughs) Possibly so, though. He's got a point there, Um, because if you look at the game last night, a lot of managers might have left um, Blake Snell in the game. You know, mm-hmm. he went five He went five plus innings. He had nine strikeouts. He was rolling. He was only giving up two hits at that point. So, for me, it's like tough to bring that guy out the game, but they pulled him. And wow. uh, once they, they pulled him, the game kind of started to go sour, you know, a little bit after that. Uh, when you're steamrolling in the, in the playoffs, especially the World Series, you got to ride the hot hand. Um, but analytics will, will tell Come on. Hey, he was getting the good stuff. Too. I know, right? <laughs> he was all into it. Hey, this, that's the breakdown we need. <laughs> man, well, we appreciate y'all, man. And uh, Jamal, man, we appreciate him for stopping through, uh, hollering at us, man, and uh, pulling up. Uh, It'll be an awesome, uh, awesome, awesome interview, man. We we got to have him back for something. We'll yeah, yeah. And uh, my brother got a lot to say, man. And it, being young as he is and been through a lot, man, his his wisdom is outstanding, you know? Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I've never met his big brother, met his sister, his dad, his grandfather. We might have to go ahead and roll up, pull up and have all of them on here because you, you definitely will be amazed to hear his father and grandfather. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody even mentioned that. I think uh, earlier, yeah. like we need right here. That needs to be right here. Uh, your brother needs to be a thirty yeah. thirty on black families of Major League Baseball. You know, weeks, the Griffiths, the Bonds, the yep. true black history. Our kids need to know about. He's right, man. Yeah, so yeah, we, we definitely need to uh, follow back up and see if we get his whole family on, man. Just right. talk, you know. Right. They, they right. got something special going on, man. But we appreciate y'all ballers out there, man. This was for y'all, man, a little sit down, man, where we really can get into the the details of these guys, uh, 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 details of the lives of these uh, pro guys who have who have lived lives that a lot of people just don't expect because we're looking at them hitting home runs or stealing bases or uh, hitting people or catching touchdowns and don't realize that you know uh, behind that is a real person with real issues. Yeah. Yeah. That are going through the same struggles that you and I are going through. Yeah, yeah, and I and I appreciate his transparency, man. You know, mm-hmm. not only communicate his success, but also being authentic by his failures as well, man. Absolutely. I appreciate that, dude, man. Hey, what the Bible said, we'll come to the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Okay, testimony. There yep. it is. So well, we, that's that. the way to win, the end and win. We won tonight, y'all. Yeah. Uh, take all those nuggets, man, and, and, and definitely use those and give them to the kids. For sideline to baseline with MB and K. Lou. Hey, y'all, we are gone. Hey, make sure y'all check us out on Friday now, 6 p.m. on Friday. We'll be back, baby, for our pregame show. All yes, right, sir. Later. All right. <laughs>